Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Credit Talk. My name is Larry Smith. I'll be your host this evening. I'm a, a lawyer in Chicago, a consumer rights lawyer. I handle all kinds of consumer rights, and a lot of it dealing with credit and your credit. So give us a call tonight if you want to call in. I'll be here for the next half hour at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Give me a call. Whatever questions you have about credit, your credit, your credit reports, uh, your score, your situation, hopefully we can help you out. And if you miss us, if you don't get in touch with us tonight, you see behind me 773-862-4000 is our, is our helpline. But if you're going to call me now, go ahead and give us a call. I'll be here. I'm going to talk to you about a couple different things tonight, depending on how much time I have. and depends how many calls I get. Uh, but we're going to start talking to you a little bit about the different kinds of reasons your reports, credit reports, and other reports that are like credit reports are looked at. Uh, we're going to talk about how it's not just when you apply for credit cards or home loans that your reports are looked at. There's all kinds of other reasons and there are all kinds of other reports. And then if I have some time after that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about debt collection scams. I know that doesn't necessarily always affect your credit. A lot of times debt collectors do report on credit reports. So we know about that. We can talk about that if you have questions. But we're going to talk about the, the scams that are going on out there. There's quite a few. Okay, so you have any questions about any of that, give us a call, 312-738-1060. This is Credit Talk. And again, I'm Larry Smith, uh, local consumer rights attorney. So <clears throat> your credit report, uh, you're, you're always looking at your score. You, you watch TV commercials that tell you to watch Credit Karma, watch your score, and you're always concerned about it. Why? So you could, uh, what, get credit cards, buy a house, right? Uh, that's what we know our credit's for. Uh, we all, when you go buy a car, when you go try to get a loan, we all know that somebody's going to be looking at a credit report from TransUnion, from Equifax, from Experian, and uh, that's what they're going <clears> to <throat> use to determine whether or not to give you credit. But did you know, uh, and, and let me mention, that uh, your credit and your rights that you have with your credit are governed by a law called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It's a law that that governs credit reporting agencies and how they maintain and handle your information. Okay, it's the Fair Credit Reporting Act, but it's a misnomer. It really shouldn't be called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It should be called the Fair Consumer Reporting Act because it really defines any report as a consumer report. And that includes other information. Uh, other information about you, your mode of living, your characteristics, your income, your history, your propensities, all those things are information that companies use to determine whether or not to give you credit or other things. So <clears throat> how about if you go looking for, let's say, a job? And can they look at your credit report? Well, most certainly they can. Now, there are many states like Illinois that have elect, enacted legislation that say that uh, they can't just go pulling your credit report for any reason. Uh, currently, if the job pays over $75,000 or if it's a job where the person's going to be dealing with money or could be p potentially dealing with somebody's money, then their credit report could be looked at. But there's other reports. Uh, there's arrest reports. Uh, there's uh, conviction reports. Um, other information about you that's out there. And if you go applying for a job, let's say you want to get a job Uber and Lyft or, or any other uh, large store you go to, Walmart, uh, you go to work for a bank, uh, you're going to sit down and you're going to sign a document that says that they're allowed to look at a report for you. And they're going to get a report. And that it, that's going to come from somebody other than TransUnion, Equifax, or Experian. Now, those companies might supply information to a report to that um, employer, but um, unfortunately, uh, the, the credit bureaus themselves aren't making those credit reports. Uh, what's happening is these other companies, there's companies called Checker and First Advantage, and there's probably a good 50 or 60 companies out there that actually compile information about you and give it to potential employers. So that's another kind of report that is out there about you, uh, that information is being shared about you. and your, those, those companies that create those reports are governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That is, if the report about you is wrong, they can be held liable for giving false information out about you. They have an obligation 
to conduct an investigation into what you say is wrong. If you contact them and tell them the report that they put out was incorrect, they have an obligation to conduct an investigation within 30 days and respond back to you. Just like the credit bureaus. What else? How about insurance? Actually, yeah. Insurance companies buy reports, and those reports aren't necessarily coming from TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. There's other reports out there about you that talk about your history with insurance. Do you pay your premiums on time? Do you make claims? When you make claims, how are they handled? Uh, are you, uh, do you work well with the company? Are you amenable? Do you litigate? Those, that kind of information shows up in another kind of report, and it's not the regular credit bureaus, but those companies are governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Again, if you try to apply for insurance and you're told that your premiums went up because of some history about you, and this happens all the time, your premiums went up about it because of some history about you, they must comply with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, give you notice of whose report they looked at, and that company whose report they looked at, you can find out who they are, dispute to them inaccurate information, and demand that they respond within 30 days. Same thing. Where else? Renting an apartment. Now, renting an apartment is not credit. It's not getting credit. You're not getting credit when you're paying rent. Oh, looks like we got a caller. Let's take it. Caller? Yeah, hello there. Hi. Hey, so um, you're talking about collections. And so I had a collection here about uh, three years ago, and I done paid it off. And I got a receipt from there because I sent the money order, you know. And the uh, new collection agent, they keep calling me. So I said, look, look at here. I paid that. And they keep calling me. I sent them that letter with the receipt and the check. And they still, they still keep calling me. Now, now what's that all about? So you had a collector contact you. You paid off a, a debt. It's all paid, and now a different collection agency has picked up the phone and started calling you regarding that debt. That's right. Okay. So, first of all, you, and, and you said you sent them proof that you paid it. Mm-hmm. And they're still calling you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, if you send that company something in writing that says, please do not communicate with me anymore. Cease and desist all communications. They must heed that. They cannot communicate with you anymore. If they call you again after you send a written notice for them to mm -hmm. cease and desist all communication, they violate the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and may be held liable to you in an amount of up to $1,000 plus attorney's fees and court costs. And that's what mm. you should do. Okay? Uh, tr that 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 sounds good, and I think I'm gonna do that now. I, I they call me at my work too, and keep harassing my boss. Okay, another violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. So, and there's a number of violations in, in, in that particular instance. First of all, um, contacting your boss. Uh, there's no there's no need to contact third parties. In fact, it violates the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act to contact third parties for any reason except to seek your location information. So if they're calling your place of work to find out if you're there one time, that's fine. They can only do it once. They cannot mention that you owe a debt. They cannot mention why they're calling. They're just seeking location information. So that's the first thing. If they ever call that number again, they're violating the law. Okay. And if they disclose any information to your boss about the debt, that violates the law. If they harass your boss in any way, that violates the law. All of that. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like, you know, if they, they're doing that kind of stuff, you have yourself a, a violation of the uh, a Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, you might be entitled to recover. At one time they said they're going to call the police on me. And I said, <clears throat> what for? And they just kept harassing. They said they'd call the police on you? That's what they threatened me with. Okay, well... One of the things I was going to be talking about tonight is debt collection scams. And this sounds like one. Let's get into it. I think you're right. Let's get into it. Okay? Let's start talking well, about debt collection scams. Thanks for the segue, caller. 
And hey, callers, I'll take any other calls while I'm talking about this. Just call in at 312-738-1060. Call me. I'm here to talk about it. We're a credit talk. But let's, let's talk about collection scams. There are a lot of them out there. An absolute ton. Um, most of the time, <clears throat> the debt itself, it could have been a legitimate debt. Um, it is... Uh, what I've seen is the origins are typically either a credit card from a small bank like Credit One or Charter One Bank. Um, I've heard of Verizon bills or AT&T bills, that, and, and they date back to 2010 or before. A lot of people are calling me saying that they say it's a debt from 2007. So a very, very old debt that's what we call out of statute. Out of statute means... It's beyond the statute of limitations. You can no longer be sued for this debt. So it's that old. You know, we're looking at a 7 to 10 year old debt from a small credit card company, not one of the big ones, small ones. Um, overdraft bank accounts. I get that a lot. They're saying that I overdrafted a bank account and I owe all this money. I'm hearing that a lot. Uh, and occasionally we're getting um, doctor bills because people have a hard time keeping track of their doctor bills from time to time so i guess these scammers are trying to convince people that oh you have a hospital bill that was unpaid um so <clears throat> those are the origins it's it's not your typical kind of debt that you know of it's not a mortgage it's not a car loan uh it's not a um it's not a current credit card it's not chase city bank or any of the big banks it's it's either a teeny tiny bank or your bank overdraft, supposedly you had an overdraft, um, an old cell bill. Uh, and they'll, and, and what will happen is they will, they'll call up and there's a few different ways they'll do it. But they'll always immediately tell you that they're going to garnish your wages. They will tell you that somebody's on their way uh, to serve you with papers. And that's a big one I hear all the time. Okay, <clears throat> um, Somebody's on their way to serve you with papers. Here's a number to call so that you could stop it. Uh, we're going to garnish your wages immediately, even though there's no judgment. <clears throat> um, real debt collectors, real collection companies, number one, will call you up, will disclose their name to you, tell you the name of their company, mail you something on the regular mail and letterhead. Real collectors will do that. Real collectors, if they want to sue you, will just sue you. They will file a lawsuit and serve you. They will call you and warn you. Real process servers do not call people they're supposed to serve and warn them that they're on the way and give them the chance to call up the company that they're supposedly serving for to pay off the debt. The process server doesn't make money unless he goes and serves the paper. So it's foolish of that process server to actually call up somebody they're about to serve and say, hey, <clears throat> you know, uh, why don't you pay these guys off before I show up? They're taking money, taking food out of their mouths. So real, real process servers do that. Real collectors that have a judgment against you and have the right to garnish your wages or, or, or take assets will just do that. They don't warn you. They like to shock you. They want to catch you off guard. Okay? Phony collectors. Phony collectors will be very vague about what their name is. You ask them their name and they make it up. Um, a lot of times we're hearing them giving that they're out of Southern California. A law group out of Southern California. <clears throat> calling somebody here in Chicago, saying that they're going to garnish wages. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But phonies... Oh, we got a call coming in. Caller? Hello. Hello. <clears throat> hey, um, my name is Mark, and I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Like, I had a uh, credit card company that put something on my credit score, and then they refused, or they reported to the credit bureau, and they refused to take it off, even though they knew that what they were doing was complete. And I then uh, threatened to sue them, and... Strangely enough, it all just dropped right off. But like, do I have any, you know, repercussions that I can take against them because of the fact that my credit score went from 820 down to 605 for a matter of a couple months and then Did, just went back in, up again after I fought with them a lot? 
Colin, let me ask you this. Um, in that in that couple of month period of time, while uh, while while it, the score was dropped, had you applied for any credit? Well, I wanted to. I, what I wanted to do actually, I was trying to buy a house. And but had you gone through the application it, process? In other words, well, had the I, broker seen your score? Well, the broker. I told the broker what was going on, and the broker. I needed a jumbo note. I was looking at a home that was quite expensive. And the broker said, well, look, you're never going to qualify for it. So uh, whether he saw it, I don't know. But it really took like three months of me really getting at, I don't know if I can say the credit card company, maybe not, but with a major credit card company. And I finally told them that if I get denied the loan, I thought they were maybe responsible for three times the damages. If I were denied, like a jumbo note. No, I mean, that's not true. And there's no such thing as three times damages on that kind of case. And and just just the specific facts that you've given, is the repercussions there? Probably not. Let me explain how there would be, okay? Um, so in your situation, you got a credit card company that is maybe knowingly putting false information on there. I mean, that's the, the threshold question is, is what they're well, reporting here, here, accurate? If I can just maybe correct it, which was, I was on auto payment, and their computer glitched and stopped taking the auto payment. And I had proof because I was on auto pay, and okay. their auto pay just didn't grab it. So they didn't apologize. They didn't want to do anything. They sent me to the collection company, and then the collection company said, well, you have to talk to this major credit card company. The major credit card company says, no, you got to talk to our, our, our credit people, you know, our, our collection people. And I said, well, wait. I'll get both of you guys. I'm going to hire a lawyer like you, and I don't care. Let him go make the money. I just want this taken off my credit. And it took three months of, of really going back and forth and, okay. and the inconveniences involved. Okay. So, so starting with the presumption that what they're reporting is purely inaccurate, it was not your fault, you didn't miss the payments, you were set up to pay it, and they didn't take it. Let's just go with the presumption that that would be considered inaccurate reporting. Um, so what you would have to do under the Fair Credit Reporting Act is issue your dispute to the credit bureaus. Going to that credit card company and complaining, you're giving them the knowledge that what they're doing is wrong. But unfortunately, the way the Fair Credit Reporting Act is written, the statutory scheme, the way it's written, you cannot just go attack a credit card company for falsely reporting, no matter how many times you converse with them and complain to them that what they're doing is wrong. You have to initiate a dispute to the credit bureau. <clears throat> the credit bureau is the gatekeeper. You know, they're, it's their data. They're the ones in charge. So you have to go to the bureaus and say, hey, bureaus, this major credit card company is giving you wrong information because, because I was on auto pay, because I was paying everything on time, they had a glitch in their system, they stopped taking my payments, and then they decided to report me as late. They were wrong. And that kicks off the dispute process. The credit bureau will then contact your credit company. And that credit card company will be asked, hey, is he right? Is what he's saying right? And they're supposed to respond back and say, yeah, he's right, fix that. And if they don't, and they, their response is, no, leave it the way it is, then from that point forward, any damage you suffer, you're entitled to. Um, you don't get to recover for any damage that you suffered before com communicating to the credit bureaus. See, if you, if you got denied credit before you communicated to the credit bureaus, those are lost. Then you communicate to the credit bureaus, you kick off the 30-day dispute period. After 30 days, they respond and tell you what your credit report's gonna look like going forward, and that's when your damages begin. So if you would have gone and disputed to the credit bureaus and got a response and they didn't fix your credit report, and then you go to that loan officer and say, hey, you know, I wanna get this loan, but the credit bureaus, you know, they're not taking this thing off, but what do you think? And if that person says no, you know, if they won't take it off, then yeah, then you've got a, a good case against the credit card company. But if you didn't dispute to the credit bureaus and all you did was dispute to them and threaten to them that you'll, you know, you'll go legal if they don't uh, take care of it, uh, you, you let them off the hook and, and, they, and they got out of it. Um, so unfortunately, that's what happened there. All right? So if something shows up on your credit again, then you should go directly to the credit bureaus first, not to the credit card company. Exactly. 
If something shows up on your credit report that's wrong, you go right to that credit reporting agency whose report it is and tell them it's wrong. You say, hey, credit reporting agency, that Chase account that you're reporting, that's wrong because, and you tell them why. And that credit reporting company will say, hmm, we have to investigate this, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Chase, and we're going to say, Chase, um, this is what this guy says. He gave us this information. What's your word on this? Now, the unfortunate truth is, you know, 99% of the time, if the credit card company says something different than you, the credit bureaus are going to follow what the credit card company said and really not give any deference to you. And that's, of course, where I come in, and that's where I make a living. Um, so, um, now, can you sue both at that point? Uh, can you sue both the credit card company and the credit bureau for basically like a, a libel or slander per se on you? Well, uh, again, the law is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, libel and slander per se are common law causes of action that the Fair Credit Reporting Act preempts. It's a preemptive law. So there's nothing else that you can sue under... If the Fair Credit Reporting Act covers it, it covers it, and you can't use any other theory of law. Could you go after both the Bureau and the bank? The answer is generally yes. They're both liable in their own way. But there's a practical answer to it, and that is it depends, of course. Um, <clears throat> in every case, we analyze it case by case. What specifically did you say to the Credit Bureau? What was specifically said to them? What was given to them? Was there enough information there that the credit bureau themselves could have done something, not just rely on the bank? Or is this information that, you know what, it, it's, all, you know, it's only information that the bank would have. The credit bureaus couldn't possibly have that. For instance, um, <clears throat> if I see this a lot. I've seen somebody reported as dead uh, on a credit report, but it was only on one account. So... <laughs> You know, the, the credit bureau sends us, you know, to, let's say Chase, I'm just using it as a hypothetical, um, the credit bureau sends Chase notice and says, hey, this person says he's not dead. Uh, and, you know, in that one, the credit bureaus, they don't have to rely on what Chase says. They could look at everything else in the credit report and see that there's other active accounts going, gee, it doesn't look like he's dead. So it, it's a situation, it's a case-by-case -case thing where you just have to look at what is it that you're complaining about? Is it something that the credit bureaus could have found themselves within their system, or is it something that you have to rely on, you know, how bad the creditor either screwed up or didn't screw up? Um, and then with that, then you have to make a decision. Who's more culpable, or are they both culpable? Okay? And, and that's what we kind of do in every case. We look at... Are one or both of them culpable? You know, we like to bring them both in because obviously it's you know more of an opportunity to recover for our client. But <clears throat> as, as far as you know, whether or not you sue them both, we you have to see what the situation is each time. And who has to pay the attorney's fees on that? If Sorry, you recover? who what? Who pays the attorney's fees? Under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, they're responsible for paying attorney's fees and costs, uh, fees and court costs. If you're successful, if you're successful with the case, they have to pay attorney's fees and court costs. I have one other quick question I think is in your, in your area, and that is if you keep getting phone calls from places like warranty companies for your car, is that something that you handle too where they're calling you, you know, we want you to do this, and they're calling your cell phone, and they're sending you faxes? The Telephonic Consumer Protection Act, yes, I've, I've been involved in a number of class actions and I'm currently involved in them. Um, they, they, they can be lucrative class action cases, depending. You have to find those, those companies. Um, the, this law, and I got one more minute, so I'll wrap it up, but I'll tell you, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act says that somebody cannot call your cell phone with an auto dialer or a pre-recorded message unless they have your express consent to do so. All right, so uh, listen, um, thanks so much, caller, for your call, and the caller before that, I appreciate your call. Um, hopefully I gave you guys the information you're looking for. Um, we, we, we talked a little bit about um, different kinds of reports that are sent out about you. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, credit uh, debt collector scams. Uh, we had a great call that came in to talk to us a little bit about a collection situation. He was in, I think he was being scammed, and in an awesome last call we talked about a good credit reporting problem uh, that's right up our alley. Um, this has been Credit Talk. 
If you missed us, call us at 773-862-4000. Again, my name is Larry Smith. It was a pleasure speaking to you tonight. Have a wonderful evening.